Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're doing a little project video. Sorry, it's been a little bit. Um, I'm going through the process of actually starting another channel and it's uh, it's all golf centric. That's my other hobby is golf. I'm, I'm, I'm an avid golfer. I do a lot of golf. I, I think I'm just as much of a student of the game of golf as I am on 3D printing and making and things like that. It's something I've always done and loved and figured why not start a little channel around it. So I go out to the course and I film some rounds and I do some practice in the backyard. Um, I've got a, um, a golf simulator that I've built here uh, in the backyard, and then I go out and I film around. So I picked up a little bit of some equipment, and one of the items I picked up was this DJI Osmo Action Pack uh, camera, Action 4 camera. And it's uh, I haven't even used it yet, but it seems like it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want to do is I have, a I, have, I have a couple tools I take out with me, but I have this nice little clamp that I can easily put it on to. So if I've got a cart, I can climb into the cart. Um, but there are there are some shots where you have to have it on a tripod. And so I want that universal screw on tripod tripod mount that I can actually keep the camera clipped to this at all times and then use the clamp here to actually clamp it on to something that sits on the top of the tripod. So I set off to find a pre-existing, I set off to find a pre-existing uh, universal mount, like something I'm thinking first. I found one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to do some modifications to it, just all within Orca Slicer, nothing in Fusion 360, just doing some basic modifications here within the tool, and then print it out and test it out and see how it goes. So I thought we'd go through that process right now. So I will link to the file that I found. I found this, uh, this cool little mount, very basic mount. It's a screw top mount. It's actually got no threaded holes in it. Um, so it's going to be basically a self-threading type of, uh, type of scenario, unless I want to find an insert and sort of bury it in. But for test purposes, uh, I think this is, this is fine for now, because I'm only going to use the base portion. I'm only going to use this bottom portion. So I need to bring this into Orca. I need to slice off the bottom. I need to add a primitive, uh, like a cylinder, something big enough that's going to fit inside here, because the top of my tripod is actually too thin for this to fit on. So I'm going to just make a couple of the modifications. We're going to print it out in PETG, and then we're going to test it out and see how it goes. So moving over here, uh, let's go ahead and import this. We're just going to walk through the process. So GoPro support mount. This is what I'm doing. You can see it's sort of got this gnarled uh, handle, and it's got this top portion here. I don't need that top portion at all. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cut tool. I'm going to select there and I'm just going to come on down I'm going to grab the little yellow ball and I'm going to bring it on down to cut off just that portion. I'm going to say I want to keep the lower part and I don't want to keep the top part perform cut. Now it's all gone. So I've got just the knob portion with what I need with through hole at the bottom. Um, and, and that's what we're going to use. So now I want to add like a two inch tall or a 50 millimeter tall. Uh, round cylinder, something for that to clamp onto. So in this, you can have a couple of different options. I found the easiest way in this case is I'm going to right click and say add primitive. I'm going to do a cylinder. Uh, it's going to throw it in right there. But what I want to do now is I want to change the scale. So I'm going to come on up here and use the scale tool. I'm going to change this to 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters by about 45 millimeters. So that should be plenty tall for what I'm looking to do. Now, to join these two things together, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Like, Orca didn't do us any favors here. So if we use the move thing and we just move this around, you can see if I center it and move it on top, fine. But now the hole's gone because it's taken up its place. Everything's sitting on the build plate. Now, if I do what you think would be the great thing to do is just move this thing up, doink, bounces right back to the plate. Doink, right back to the plate. Now you can get away with a couple different things where instead of adding a separate part, you can say right click, add a part directly to this and you'd be combining these two parts together and you can do a few things like that. This is the easiest method, frankly. As you take this part, you're already on the move. You actually sink this guy down into the plate. So I'm gonna sink him all the way down into the plate about there. I'm gonna go ahead now and move this over the top. And as I'm looking here, it looks like 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters might be a bit too big. I'm just going to go ahead and knock this down to 29 by 29. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and just derange here over the top. I'm going to get it as close as I can. You can do some tricky alignment stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I don't need to be perfect here but I want it to just about line up. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's good enough. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over here to the objects tab. I'm gonna highlight them both and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say assemble. 
So now you can see it's put everything together and it's brought it all back up to the build plate. So now I have the hole at the bottom. I have the handle on top. I've got everything I need. Now all you need to do is pick the material and slice and print. So for this case, I believe it's already selected correctly. So I'm going to grab this. You can see the whole thing is now selected. It's not two separate parts. It is one assembled part. I'm going to click here on the color painting tool. I'm going to select number three in my AMS. That is my generic PETG. I'm going to go ahead and make sure fill is turned on and I'm going to click that. So now I've got that set on my PETG setting. Um, I like my settings already. I believe I'm set to go with three walls, 10% infill, honeycomb infill pattern. Uh, I think I'm good to go. Let's just slice it and see how this thing looks. So it looks like we're going to be just about an hour or so to print. That seems kind of long to me. And what is this? Why, why, blah, why is that happening? So if I roll this all the way down, I wonder why this is happening. So let's let's <clears throat> let's double let's troubleshoot this a little bit. Why do I have this tower over here? So line type filament. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, it says one and three. Okay, so that's what we got going on here. Let's go back over to preview. I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. Let's actually let's do this objects. I'm going to say the GoPro itself. Oh, duh, look, it all says over here, filament number three. There we go. The whole thing is now set to three. So mon filament three, let's go ahead and re-slice this plate. Let's see what's going on here. And a little over an hour to print. My line type is that. I have no more prime tower. I don't have any towers over here. Now I think I'm gonna actually do a little something else to this. I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing um, a textured surface. So I'm gonna come on down here to special mode. Uh, fuzzy skin is contour. I'm going to leave it at the default settings of 0.8 and 0.3. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to randomize the scene. Okay, so it's done. We printed this out last night. Uh, come back in the morning and take a look at it. And actually, it turned out really good. And it threaded on my tripod, which I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, and I was a bit concerned with um, no threads, no inserts. And so it threaded on fine once, twice three times, I'm not real sure that it would hold up over time. And so what I wanted to do is actually uh, grab an insert, a metal insert, and uh, one of the universal camera mount inserts and thread it in there. And I realized that, uh, that this was a good prototype. Um, but in the process of uh, inserting that insert, I heated it up, pressed it in, and built it right through it. And then I realized, well, I've got, I got my infill set up a little bit wrong. So there's a couple things that we needed to change on this for iteration number two which was we actually needed to make the, the hole on the bottom just a, a tad bigger uh, to accept the insert relatively easily. And I also wanted this bottom portion here to be uh, completely solid so that the insert had something to grab onto. This whole thing is 15%, 10 or 15% infill, which for these purposes isn't really gonna work much. Uh, I just want the bottom portion here to be the solid and then the top portion here can be, can be infill and save some material there. So we're going to walk through that process and I printed it out and then I'll show you how it all works. So the first things first is let's, let's make sure the hole here on the bottom is the right size. And so measuring the insert itself that I put in, it was basically just under nine millimeters, about 8.89 millimeters uh, in diameter. Uh, and so for my purposes, uh, it's, it's relatively easy. So again, right, what we're trying to do is not take this into CAD. We're going to do everything with an Orca slicer so that any, any anybody that's new or is, does not have CAD abilities, you don't you don't necessarily have to for every little thing, right? You can do a lot of things with an Orca slicer. So on the on the completely solid part here, I right click and I say add a negative part, and in the negative part, I select cylinder, and that adds this little guy right there. So uh, you can do the same function. You can then specify the scale and the size, however you want to do it, and then you're, and then I place this in the middle. Um, just by hitting the move icon here, I just place this exactly where I wanted it to go. So if I, hello, if I grab this little arrow and I move it back over into the center now, get this correct in here. In fact, if you sink this down into the, the bed, just a hair while you're centering this, then you can get relatively precise with where it's gonna place it. So that looks, okay-ish good enough for this uh demonstration here and so then we can actually move this up just a bit and so negative part is just like adding a modifier and saying don't print here but the negative part actually makes things a little bit easier so it's automatically just going to say 
don't print here, right? This is negative. Like nothing's here. Don't print here. That's what the shadow is for. And so everything else is now going to go. Now for the second piece of this, which is I want to make sure this bottom portion here is actually 100% infill. For that, we're going to go over to the, to the objects tab. On the objects tab, we still have this thing separate here. So we've got our GoPro support, the original STL, which is this bottom piece, right? That's the bottom piece here. And then we have the cylinder that we added, and then we have the negative part that we just added. So if we click on just the bottom portion, you can see it's highlighted here. Now down here under strength, so whatever's selected here, down here, you're only affecting that particular part. So if I go down to strength and I come down here to sparse infill, I set this to 100. So now just that piece is going to be 100% infill. And if we click on the cylinder itself, you can see that's 10% infill. Um, and then there's nothing really related to the generic. It, it, it won't do anything, right, essentially. It's a negative part. and it says don't print here. So now if we go ahead and slice the plate, we'll get a good little reading on how long this takes. I still have my fuzzy skin enabled. I've got random stuff all over the place. And if we scan up and down, you can see here that I've got 10% infill um, pattern going on in the top. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, you should see now that we've got, now we've got hundred percent infill happening. You can see now this is a circle where before it was more, more of a polygon shape, right? So this is going to be that 8.89 millimeters, a little over 310 thousandths of an inch. Um, that's what it's going to, that's what it's going to print out to So I went ahead and printed that off and that came out like this. So hopefully you can see it came out Came out nice. I did it in a silver color this time. And then I went ahead and just mildly heated up the insert and pressed that into place. Now this thing fits perfectly. So let's take a look at, uh, let's, let's make sure it works. Like I want to make sure it works. Okay. So we have our trusty little uh, tripod here. So it is a expandable tripod that I take out with me. It's nice and light. It's easy to break down and do whatever. And again, right. I want to make sure I can take my little, my little clip here and quickly move it from golf cart to this. And this is not going to work. That's too thin. So that's the whole purpose for this little guy is just to give this thing some meat to grab onto. So with the insert, we just go ahead and thread it on. Nice and tight. It's on there good. So now I can actually take this with my camera on it. And I can take this easily from the cart, snap it on, and it's nice and secure. And I can move this around. And then when I'm going back to the cart, I can just peel it off and do whatever. So super easy, right? This is not, this is a nothing project. So if you're new and you, and you, and you're a little worried about, oh, I don't know. I don't have cat. I don't know. I don't use cat. I don't use fusion. I don't have it. You don't need it. The work is great at giving you some basic tools to do, do little modifications that you need to. And as long as you know which ones to use where and when, and some of the best practices, great. And I'm sure there's others that are going to drop comments and like, ah, oh, you should do it this way. And you can do it that way. Great. Everyone go read them all. Like there's uh, more than one way to skin a cat for sure in this particular instance. So less than five minutes worth of design work, uh, about an hour worth of printing. And now I've got a little solution. I don't have to go look for something on Amazon and buy it or whatever. This is probably, what, what was this? It's just 49 cents in material costs um, in, in less than like five minutes of my time. So perfect. This is exactly what 3D printing is for in my case. So I love it. So anyway, I hope this helps somebody. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.